Hey everybody, I hope you guys are having a great day. Today I wanted to cover the story or legacy of Deckard Cain. So Deckard Cain, as we know him, was a kind and avid scholar who dedicated his life to the pursuit of knowledge and the protection of sanctuary from all demonic threats. He had a soft spot for storytelling, as we know. <clears throat> Stay a while and listen. And with his vast knowledge, he also had this innate ability to discern the true nature of many things in life. So this is pretty much why he's able to identify our items. He just has a special ability to discern that true nature of these items. So Deckard Cain was actually born in Tristram. He's not like a massive traveler. He's lived most of his life in Tristram. He was born here. He grew up here. And as he was growing up here, his mother would tell him endless stories of the Herodrum and how the angels and demons were real. Her stories about the angels and demons and the Herodrum would inspire him as a kid, influencing him to dream about one day traveling the world and fighting evil, just like our adventurers. Now, by the age of 11, the same year it, that he lost his father to sickness, Cain actually grew tired of his mother's stories and her growing madness. Now, I don't know if this was him lashing out because he lost his father in the same year. It's just coincidence, maybe, that he lost his father at age 11, which is the very same year he started doubting these stories and lashing out at his mother's quote unquote madness. Now, despite her pleas to Cain about the stories, he no longer wanted anything to do with her fairy tales. So Deckard Cain is the last of the Herodrum. I guess he's very familiar with this through his mother uh, telling him. And when he grows up after no longer really believing in these stories, he then becomes a schoolmaster and storyteller in Tristram. So he still kind of followed his mother's footsteps there as a storyteller. Now, Pepin, the healer that sells us potions in Diablo 1, he is Cain's closest friend. And at some point in Tristram, Cain would also meet and marry this one woman named Amelia, and he would have a son with her named Jared. So as the years drew on, Cain became more absorbed in his scholarly pursuits, shutting out all of his friends and family. Why he suddenly became really obsessive with his scholarly pursuits, we don't know. It's just suddenly he starts doing this after he has his family. Now, his obsession would cause him and his wife to constantly argue over his lack of presence in his son's life. He's been so addicted to his scholarly stuff that he hasn't been paying attention to his son. All his wife could constantly think was, why would he name his son after his famous ancestor, Jared, if his Herodric lineage supposedly means nothing to him? And why was he never there for his son or for me? Now, by the time Jared, his son, turned four, his wife Amelia just had enough of his obsessions and his neglect. So this prompted her to take Jared and leave Tristram. But unfortunately, shortly after they left the safety of Tristram, her wagon was attacked by a group of bandits and they ended up killing his wife and his son. So the deaths of his wife and son haunted Deckard for decades even after their death. He still thinks about it even when he was alive as a very old man, and he still held on to the death notice that he had received concerning them. Now, during the Darkening of Tristram, this is where we get to the actual games with Diablo 1 as we know it, that's the Darkening of Tristram, Deckard and the rest of the town noticed how King Leoric's mood steadily darkened over a period of time since he arrived in Tristram. This would lead Cain to again spend a lot of time in the library of Tristram's Cathedral, going over old Herodric texts. The Herodric texts contained the exact same stories his mother always told him about when he was a child, and he couldn't help but notice that these texts contained accounts of both angels and demons as history, not as myth. From what he was reading in these texts, he guessed that, based on how Leoric was acting, that Diablo himself had indeed infected the king with some kind of corruption. So reflecting on the events of the past year with uh, the king showing up in Tristram and now he's killing people, he's claiming everyone's betraying him, he's going insane, and then of course we have some other events that go on. After reflecting on these events, Cain begins to reflect on the tales that his mother originally told him when he was younger, and he was curious about whether there was any truth to them. Could there really have been some evil entity buried underneath the town of Tristram? Well, Cain would quickly come to regret that, thinking and not acting upon his concerns, because shortly after, Archbishop Lazarus had actually led a group down into the cathedral, and that was actually when Lazarus betrayed everyone, led everyone to their deaths, and they were killed by, of course, the demon we know as the Butcher. 
So between the Mad King and now the betrayal of Archbishop Lazarus, a lot of the villagers of Tristram quickly began to leave the town. Now, coincidentally, a self-proclaimed witch by the name of Adria arrives in Tristram, and soon after her, a group of adventurers also show up, curious about what's going on with the cathedral. So word has spread very wide across the world, and now we have uh, several adventurers, a Vigeri mage, as we know as a sorcerer, we got the Sister of the Sightless Eye Rogue, as we know, and even the warrior Aiden. So now that these adventurers and this witch are here, curious about the cathedral, and with Cain now an expert in the Herodric texts regarding the angels and the demons, Cain would lend any advice and knowledge he could to the adventurers as they explored the depths of the cathedral. So this is our character going down through the levels, of course. His help would actually lead to not only the defeat of the now-cursed King Leoric. Rest well, Leoric. I'll find your son. The betrayer Lazarus. Abandon your foolish quest. All that awaits you is the wrath of my master. You are too late to save the child. Now you will join him in hell. Your madness ends here, betrayer. And Diablo, the Lord of Terror. But, however, keep in mind here, despite this defeat and this amazing victory and everyone celebrating in Tristram, despite that defeat and this victory here, the warrior Aiden, who was there, in fact, to kill Diablo, he actually absorbed Diablo's soul stone with the hopes of containing the Lord of Terror. And surprisingly, I don't know how, but Deckard Cain did not pick up on this when the warrior started acting very similar to King Leoric. I guess he thought maybe the warrior was just having a lot of PTSD and side effects from going through this very devastating ordeal deal down below Tristram, but Deckard Cain did not pick up that maybe he did take the Soul Stone. Now unfortunately because Deckard Cain did not think about this, shortly after Diablo's original defeat under Tristram, the warrior quickly leaves Tristram which spawns a bunch of demons and done dead, which actually not only destroys Tristram but kills everybody in the town except for Deckard Cain who was then left in a cage to starve to death. We know this in Diablo 2 Act 1 as one of the quests. Now, after being rescued by a group of adventurers, which are our Diablo 2 characters, we end up having Kane then following all of our characters to the east, providing his heroic knowledge and sage advice once again, and ident identifying our items, of course. And Kane and the heroes would eventually uh, make it east toward Mount Arya, defeating not only the lesser evils and Daryl and Duriel, but also the three brothers Mephisto, Diablo, and Bale, which we also saw the destruction of the World Stone Chamber. Now, five years after the destruction of the Worldstone Chamber, which is the end of Diablo 2, according to what we know so far of Diablo Immortal, from what I've seen, Cain visits the island of Bilefen to investigate its corruption, which is where he first meets the Diablo 3 heroes. So he doesn't meet the Diablo 3 heroes at the beginning of Diablo 3. It's apparently more than a decade before that, which is when Diablo Immortal takes place. Now, after cleansing Bilefen, Cain would then spend the next 13 years with his adopted niece, Leah, where the two would then hunt for artifacts and various different types of lore that would help piece together the prophecy of the end days. Now, after 13 years of this traveling and exploring, Leah is now a young woman, and the two, Deckard Cain and Leah, decide to return to Tristram, still in pursuit of the prophecy. He went back to his old ways, of course, going through the cathedral and just simply digging into all of the Herodric texts. So he just poured over the tombs and manuscripts and f just didn't really find anything he just spent a lot of his time there with Leah and this lasted about a year after their return to Tristram which is just before Diablo 3. So while Cain is in Tristram with his adopted niece Leah going through the Herodric text Cain's prophecy comes true when a star falls from the heavens striking the cathedral itself. Saved again by the very same adventurers he met on the island of Bilefen our Diablo 3 heroes Cain and these heroes then pursue the location of the fallen star. After finding pieces of an ancient and powerful sword on the way, an agent of Belial, known as Megda, finds the pieces with Cain, takes Cain and the pieces, and captures them. It's your choice, Cain. Either use your Herodric arts to repair the sword, or your dear Leah dies a horrible death. 
All this pain, this destruction, what is the sword to you? To me, nothing. To my master, Belial, everything. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> Your rage is overwhelming, girl. You win this round, but if the sword cannot be mine, I'll claim the one it's bound to. In the end, the blade shall be mine. Uncle, you can't die. Nothing can stop that now. But there is one last thing I must do. The sword must be made whole. Just as I suspected, the sword is of the high heavens. The stranger is an angel. Heed the journal. The truth lies within. Uncle ah. Deckard! So that is the legacy and the story of Deckard Kane. He grew up knowing that he was the last of the Herodrum. Apparently, I guess his mother told him this. They were very well aware, but there just wasn't anything to really show in terms of proof of these stories. So Deckard Cain didn't really believe his mother. Just like any child, when you believe Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny, he really believed in these amazing stories, and it shaped him to what he came to be for the rest of his life basically which is to be a storyteller and to help people and to fight evil and in the pursuit of knowledge now we don't know exactly why he suddenly started uh believing his mother um other than the fact that he saw the darkening of tristram and saw hints there but even before that when he married his wife amelia and had his son jared he suddenly neglected them to study like just sit there in the cathedral and study 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 so something turned him to that now i don't know what it is we don't know why but he that's just what happened and it led to his wife basically leaving him and that's when he lost his wife and son when they decided to leave with a group of bandits so i really hope this was a useful video if you guys really enjoyed it don't be afraid to leave a comment down below discussing your thoughts anything you would like to request just anything i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for tuning in as always and i'll see you next time hopefully